Okay, for this particular video, what we're going to be looking at is how to measure the number or abundance of organisms in one area. Now, imagine a situation where you are standing in the school field and in your school field, for the sake of simplicity, there are two types of organisms. There is the grass, which forms one species represented in those green color things. And then there are also ladybirds in the area or ladybugs. Now, and I ask you to calculate the number of grass and ladybirds in the entire field. And you're standing in the middle of the field going, eh, how do I do that? <laughs> are you going to count the number of grass and the number of ladybirds in the entire field? Because the field is quite big right so while possible it is a silly thing to do because you're going to waste a lot of time to do that so what we do in those kind of situations is instead of counting the entire field we will select sections of the field and then we will measure within sections of the entire habitat that means only those sections you will count the population of grass and the population of ladybirds and then you can extrapolate it to find the number of ladybirds and the grass in the entire field. This process is known as sampling. We don't just do sampling for counting insects or such. We will also do sampling when we are carrying out surveys in people. Let's say you are asked to collect a survey of the diet the dietary habits of 20 year old people in your entire country are you going to look for every 20 year old person in your entire country obviously not you might select a good sample size which is about maybe 500 people it is not a, it is not the most accurate representation of the entire population but it is reliable enough so it's the same with sampling as well. Sampling just means that we take the entire field and we will divide it into sections, either randomly or systematically. I will talk about that later. And then we will only check the population in those sections to determine the population in the entire school field. Now, measuring the abundance number or abundance of organisms in one area, I will divide it into two. It is for immobile or sessile organisms. Immobile or sessile organisms basically means they are not able to move or they are stationary. Examples of sessile organisms will be things like like your plants, grass, or even sea anemone right there. The sea anemone is that creature. It is an animal, by the way. It is an animal, by the way. Uh, it's not a plant, but it is sessile or it is immobile. So these organisms are always stuck within one area or they are stationary. So we can do something called a quadrat sampling. A quadrat is just a square frame with variable sizes. Uh, the most common quadrats that I've used when I was in school many, 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 many centuries ago is the one where the quadrat is one meter by one meter. So it's one meter square. And within the one meter square, we also have small grids, 10 by 10. Usually we will make it 10 by 10, by the way. But we will, we can have quadrats which are rectangular. We can have quadrats which are you know, square, that's pretty normal. It doesn't have to be a fixed size, but one meter by one meter is the one that is uh, commonly used, all right? And if you're going to use this particular quadrat for the field, you have to use the same type of quadrat for the other sections of the field as well. The quadrat size has to be constant. So what you do is very simple. You just put the quadrat, boom, on the field and then if there are any plants within the quadrat you count it so if you count the number of plants within this quadrat one two three four five there are five plants within one meter square very simple however it does have its set of problems because how do you count grass though because look at grass the grass is like grass can have variable sizes right here do you count that as one grass do you count that as two three four what if those grass were actually connected to each other because they have interconnecting root systems if they all have interconnecting root systems do you count them as one 
So what you do in that case is you don't count the glass individually by one glass leaf, two glass leaf, three glass leaf. You'll be there forever and you might get heat stroke doing that under the hot sun. So what you do in that case is instead of counting, oh, the brown color represents the soil, yeah? And the green color represents the glass. So you, instead of counting the glass individually, you will measure the percentage distribution where out of the small grids here, the 100 small grids represent 100%, so one grid will represent 1%. If the glass encompasses one entire grid like that, it is 1%. If it covers less than half, you do not count it. If it is more than half, you count it as well. So as you can see here, wherever the glass occupies more than 50% of the grid, it is counted. So one, two, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Approximately 10 hours later. And it will come up to about 36%. Now, some students may be worried. What if the examiner does not assume it's 1%? Or what if you see that it's more than half and the examiner might assume it's less than half? You don't have to worry because normally in the exam, the answer will be in an accepted range. They will say, accept the range from 34% to about 38%. So as long as you are within those range, you are fine. So that's what we can do in those cases when we are using the quadrat sampling for immobile or sessile organisms. However, for mobile organisms, it can be a little bit annoying because imagine you're counting the ladybirds and you're counting one, two, three, and then the ladybirds will fly away and a new ladybird comes in and another ladybird moves over there and another ladybird flies over there and you're like, fuck, stop moving. So you'll get very annoyed. And you can't keep track of the ladybirds because you might be thinking, wait, did I count that one first or did I count that one or have I not counted that? So it, it is hard to keep track. So what you do in those cases is we will do something called the Lincoln Index, also referred to as the Mark Release Recapture Method. Now, the first thing you do is you will determine just one section of the field or the habitat and what you do is you capture as many ladybirds or organisms as possible. Now, how you capture them, usually you can use a net or something known as a pooter. You can find that online or even in your textbook, they do talk about it. Now, when you catch the organisms, it is very important to note that the way you capture the organisms have to be humane. It means that you are not capturing them by putting them into significant harm. Like for example, if you're catching insects and you're using that sticky fly paper, that is not a humane way of catching the organisms. You must catch them in a way that is not harming them. Now, once you capture, for example, the ladybirds here, this is referred to as the first capture. What you do is you have to mark the organisms in such a way. But there is also another ethical consideration. The way you mark them must not harm them. It must not increase or decrease their survival chances in the wild. For example, let's say some students will suggest to me, oh, teacher, what we can do is we can paint the ladybirds with a glow, with a bright color. No, if you paint them in a bright color, it makes them easily uh, visible in the eyes of the predators. So they might die when you release them back into the wild. You don't want to do that. So you must mark them in a way. And you also cannot break their antenna or harm or remove move one leg. No, because ladybirds have those black spots on their wings. Maybe what you can do is you might be able to just put one individual blue spot over there. And of course, it is important to note that the mark cannot be easily removed too. So there are a lot of ethical considerations we have to consider. Like for example, when they do this with polar bears, what they will do is they will tranquilize tranquilize and sedate the polar bear, which means to put it to sleep temporarily, and they will pierce the ears of the polar bear by putting a marker that or an ear tag that is not so visible. But they would know that this polar bear has been captured and marked first. 
So once you've marked the ladybird in an ethical way, you release them back into the wild and let them mix with the general population for a few days, at least a few days, yeah? And then you recapture the ladybirds. Now, when you're recapturing the ladybirds after a few days, you do not just recapture the marked ones. You recapture as many as possible. You are not going to discriminate. When you recapture as many as possible, obviously some of the ladybirds are unmarked, Okay, because they were not captured in the first time. And some of the ladybirds are marked because you captured them and marked them earlier. So this is how the second capture looks like. By having this data, you can estimate the population size of the ladybirds in the field or the organisms in the population. The formula is as follows. The first capture multiplied by the second capture divided by the number of marked individuals in the recapture. So the first capture is that one right there. The second capture is that one right there, the whole thing. And then divided by number of marked individual is that value right there. So this is how, so for example, the first capture was 20, second capture was 23, and the one that were marked individuals in the recapture was 6. So you will get a value of 76.6. There's no such thing as 0.6 ladybirds. It's not like half a half-eaten ladybird, okay? So you round it up or round it down. If it's 0.5 and above, you round it up. If it's 0.4 and below, you round it down. So in this case, there are 77 ladybirds in the habitat. This is what you have to know about the methods of measuring the number and abundance of organisms in one area for mobile organisms. If I were you, I will memorize the formula. Most of the time, the formula is given in the exams, but sometimes they may ask you a question. Explain for four marks how you would estimate the population of insects in one habitat. What you say for this, you will say that capture as many organisms as possible in that area. And because this is an insect, you will say using a net or a putter. Next, you mark the organism in a way that does not harm them. And it must not increase or decrease their survival chances. Number three, you release them back into the wild and let them mix with the general population. And number four, you recapture after a few days. And I will also write down the formula for a mark because you could get a mark for the formula. You can say that the population size is the first capture multiplied by the second capture divided by the number of marked individuals in the recapture or in the second capture. So you, they can ask questions like this as well in your paper four. So I hope you understand this one. And please do not harm the ladybirds and the insects that you are using for the Lincoln Index. All right.